Hello team and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter three talking about reviews and continuing with the next topic that is 3.3, managing reviews. And this is the part one of this particular tutorial. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding what exactly managing reviews are all about and how a test manager should be responsible for managing various activities to be performed and when and how the project review must be conducted. Now, of course, we know about the basics from the foundation already that what are the different types of reviews and how exactly a formal review is conducted. And uh, when it comes to the managing of the reviews, it means that how to plan out the review process, what kind of key factors to be considered, because the major responsibility of planning the review process is test manager. And the test manager has to determine what kind of uh, interactions we may have with the other stakeholders and when I have to make sure that my testers are contributing in requirement reviews or design reviews or code reviews and when it comes to the internal review processes like you know test plan review or uh, test cases review are these are uh, they in place or not and that's what is what we'll be covering as a part of managing reviews so review should be planned to take place at natural breakpoints wherever it is applicable wherever it is possible you should determine those breakpoints or milestones where the review must be conducted it's not a one-time activity that you can conduct it much at the beginning of the life cycle or maybe later after the code and everything is being ready or probably being tested. Now, at any point of time where you think that certain documentations are ready for the review, you should create those milestones and make sure that the testers are available to contribute and review. So allocation of the time and determination of the uh, you know, schedule will be determined by the test manager to make sure that the people will be there and have enough time to prepare. Uh, typically the review should be held after requirements and design definitions. That means uh, that's the much earliest point which you can have a review upon and probably not before the requirement because uh, you still don't have anything to review. So until unless a requirement or at least a design is documented, there's no point uh, reviewing anything with associated reviews, starting with the business objective and working down to the lowest level of design. So right from you know there, you can get into any level of designs and you can review anything there. Management reviews uh, should take place at major project milestones often as a part of verification activity before, during, and after the test execution and other significant project phases. Now, this is where a test manager plays a contribution in terms of uh, you know, participating in the management reviews, which you learned in the next previous topic, and you understood what exactly management review is all about. And uh, management reviews uh, must take place at all major milestones to determine what we have done so far or what is that we are projecting ahead, how much time do we have, how much budget do we have. So test manager must be there. <clears throat> the review strategy must be coordinated with the test policy and the overall test strategy. That means no matter what you plan, but it must be in line with the uh, test policy and the strategy which you have created for your project and the organization. Before formulating, formulating an overall review plan at the project level, the review leader that can be a test manager should take into account the following points. That is, what should be reviewed, who should be involved in specific reviews, which relevant risk factor to cover. So if you see these three questions, this basically addresses one or the other way that what exactly should be taken care of before even planning the review process. That means who should be a part of uh, uh, what should be reviewed? What like, what kind of documentation are we considering under review? And uh, uh, will that be available in a stable version to go ahead with this, including the product and process? Who should be involved in the specific review like that? The valid contributors, effective users who will, can be a part of this? And uh, which relevant risk factors are we covering during the review? Because uh, generally the reviews are sometimes conducted from the management uh, point of view in order to overcome or mitigate a particular risk. So which risk factor are we covering here or identified risk which we will be targeting. Early in the project planning phase, the review leader should identify the items to be reviewed and select the appropriate review type like informal, walkthrough, technical or inspection or a mixture of two of, or three of them and level of formality, that how formal the review process will be. So deciding on the type of review to be conducted at any point of time will be decided by the test manager during the planning phase and uh, even the level of formality required because you do understand that 
informals are completely informal uh, walk through are less formal compared to technical technicals are less formal compared to inspection and inspections are completely formal but still you do you can follow some of the formal ways of doing a walk through and fact or you know technical review as well and you can add more value to it so that's where a manager can decide that how much or what level of formality you would like to have when you are conducting certain uh, review process and uh, depending on the document depending on the type of risk which you are considering you can have the level of formality even in any particular type of review further to add the return on investment for reviews is the difference between the cost of conducting the reviews and the cost of dealing with the same defect at a later stage a lot of people wonder that how do we measure the return on investment that means what benefits will you get in return by conducting review at an early stage that can be very well measured with this calculation that is cost of conducting a review today for example x amount and the cost of dealing with the same defect at a later stage which uh, was probably missed them at the time where you were supposed to find so assume that it was a code uh, requirement defect and uh, you conducted a review at the requirement phase and uh, you invested x amount of money and when it came to uh, finding the same defect which was associated with the requirement during dynamic testing what is the amount of rework required to resolve that issue and uh, refactor the requirement redesign the product and recode the particular module and then this defect will be resolved so that cost could be x plus 1 so you have a difference there that is x uh and minus x plus 1 so of course x plus 1 that plus 1 is the additional cost which will be needing so that is what is your return on investment by conducting the reviews if the review had not been done in case you know you miss the defect and all so the cost of quality calculations can be used to help determine this number which you have learned in the previous tutorials that how to measure cost of quality and uh, you can very well relate to that to measure the return on investments determining the optimal time to perform review depends on the following factors like what is the decent time in order to conduct a review is it one day two days three days so how do we decide on that like how much time we would need to conduct a proper or formal review if you are conducting a formal one so there are certain factors which you can consider in order to determine the optimal time required to conduct a review process the availability of the item to review in sufficiently final format like by when it will be available will it be like you know a completely draft uh, for the next few days and when we are planning to conduct reviews so availability of the final document or at least stable document is what you are expecting here the availability of the right people like personnel for the review that means uh, what if the people who are supposed to review that type of document which is under review are not in the a uh, available position that means they are busy with their other assignments probably doing some automation or probably busy doing uh, code reviews uh, this is about another review so if they will not be available they will not be able to contribute effectively because they will have uh, allocations to do some other important activities and they may clearly say that no i have something important to do and even if i participate i cannot do effective contribution so there is no point inviting such people to the review rather postpone your review and then conduct it later because you know that they are valued contributors and without them this cannot be conducted just as simple as that like you know the, when you conduct a meeting with certain people and these are on leave then of course you postpone the meeting because they are not available to do that meeting with you the time when the final version of the item should be available that is final item version that means the item which you are going to test which item it is whether it is available and uh, when it will be available required the time required for the review process of that specific time that means uh, the time which is required for the review process of that specific item and that is basically depending on the size of the documentation and size of the work product you can also determine certain extent that what duration will be required to review it and then add value to it by contributing the findings and reworking on it so a lot of such factors uh, you can take from the past experience as well or uh, take from the point of uh, standards which you may are may be using or maybe if you are in case you are making use of checklist then the checklist can also determine that how much time do you really take to evaluate with help of a checklist and so on so adequate matrices for the review evaluation should be defined and uh, by the review leader during the test planning so of course we know the value of matrices from the previous chapter and we have understood that what exactly these matrices uh, will add value to 
and these matrices are very helpful to determine the progress and measurement of uh, effectiveness of the review process so it must be very well defined by the test manager during the planning phase if inspections are used then brief inspection should be conducted at the author's request as document fragments are completed so that is individual requirements or sections that means the author can definitely conduct a you know brief in inspection in order to measure that how exactly uh, the document is all about what kind of fragments have happened and uh, how to overcome that so you know these kind of uh, additional steps can also be conducted though the author is not the moderator is not going to lead the review process but yes uh, can definitely contribute from the point the objective of the review process must be defined during the test planning itself that what is the objective why are you conducting this what is the end come that is end outcome of this particular review process and uh, how much value does the review process hold in your timeline or your process so you know determining the uh, overall objective for a review process is always determined by the planning phase itself and uh, with the test manager this includes conducting effective and efficient reviews and reaching consensus decisions regarding the review feedback now consensus decision helps here to determine that it was just not one person perception it was multiple people who supported and recommended these things and came back uh, to determine what exactly it is all about and what could be the uh, you know solution for that and many people said that yes this is what we recommend to happen and this was an issue yes it is an issue why don't you resolve it so you know those kind of things can very well be entertained here and we always look forward to have a uh, Multi multiple people supporting any particular issues to be captured and reworked upon. Well, that was just the part one of this particular section. We will be having one more tutorial to cover that. Stay tuned for this. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.